A couple days ago, I saw this clip by Nani Wazuni. In it, Pomu Rainpuff and Finana Ryugu accused each other and defended their actions relating to the killings of two polar bears. The clip then showed the killings in question and asked viewers to leave your verdict in the comments below. A general scan of the comments seemed to agree that Finana would be guilty of murder, while Pomu is either guilty of manslaughter or acquitted of the killings entirely due to her apparent lack of intent. In this video, I'm going to try and apply the law to the facts to provide one answer to the question of Pomu and Fanana's guilt. But before we start, just a few ground rules. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the law of New South Wales Australia to reach a conclusion. While each jurisdiction has different rules and different legal traditions, the law of homicide tends to be similar all over the world. Additionally, because we are applying the law of homicide, we will elevate the status of the polar bears to human beings. There are two reasons why I'm using the law of homicide rather than, for example, animal cruelty laws. The first reason is that when Finana and Pomu were accusing each other and defending themselves, they were using the language that is typically associated with the law of homicide, throwing terms like murder, manslaughter, intent, self-defense, etc. Second is that in New South Wales, the law of murder is more developed than the law of animal cruelty and as such I feel it would make for a more interesting video. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I need to make it absolutely clear that I am not giving any form of legal advice in this video. I am not a lawyer. This video is purely for general informational and entertainment purposes and thus should not be taken as professional advice and should just not be taken seriously in general. Should you seek specific legal advice, contact your lawyer. With that out of the way, let's first review the available evidence. I've written a general statement of facts based off these two streams. On the 21st of April 2022, Finana Ryugu and Pomu Rainpuff were exploring the polar biome. While exploring, Finana was attacked by a polar bear because she accidentally went near the polar bear's child. After running from the polar bear, the bear chased Finana slowly, and as the bear slowly approached, Finana said, I'm gonna take your baby, and proceeded to strike the bear four times with an enchanted diamond sword, stabbing and burning the polar bear to death. During the killing, Pomu stood on a raised platform, watching. Finana then put the baby polar bear into a boat with the intention of transporting the bear to Finana and Pomu's home so she could mother the polar bear as a pet. During the trip home, Finana, with the help of Pomu, dug out ice to create a path for their boat. Later that day, the baby bear spontaneously matured into a full-sized bear. While clearing a path for the boat, Finana screamed and punched the bear, causing it to attack Finana. As she jumped out the boat, Finana struck the bear once with a fire aspect diamond sword, leaving it burning for around 8 seconds. However, the bear cannot escape the boat and as such is not an imminent danger so long as Finana does not go near the bear. Pomu Rainpuff calmed the bear down from attacking Finana. The pair want to relocate the bear onto the land, so Pomu volunteers to free the bear from the boat. Pomu accidentally strikes him once with an iron axe. Pomu tries again, but hits him twice with a piece of bread. Finana then suggests breaking the boat from underneath, and Pomu obliges. She then wields her iron axe, and although she clicks the boat, her strike kills the bear. That was not my kill. Now that we have an established set of facts, we are now going to compare the facts against the charges that will be laid against the fish and the fairy. First, we're going to look at Fenala. We'll now look at two offences laid against Fenala, murder and kidnapping. Because this is criminal law, all accused persons are presumed innocent and do not need to prove their innocence. This isn't Phoenix Wright where Mr. Wright needs to prove that their client is innocent by proving the real killer. No, in real life, the prosecution is required to prove to a jury that a person is guilty of an offence beyond a reasonable doubt. If the jury has even a small but reasonable inkling of doubt that someone may be innocent, the accused is entitled to a not guilty verdict. With that out of the way, let's look at Finana's first charge. In New South Wales, 
Murder is codified in Section 18 1A of the Crimes Act 1900. For murder to be fulfilled, all physical elements must be proven and at least one mental element must be proven to have occurred at the same time as the physical elements. Fanana unmistakably fulfills the physical elements beyond a reasonable doubt. There's no issue that her voluntary action, which is swinging a diamond sword multiple times, caused the death of a quote-unquote human being. Remember, we're comparing the polar bears to humans here. However, does she fulfill the mental elements? All the prosecution has to do is prove that one mental element exists beyond a reasonable doubt, but if they wish to build a strong case, they should try to prove that Fanana had more than one mental element present. Due to the evidence that we have here, we're only going to look at the intent elements, that is, the intention to kill and the intent to inflict grievous bodily harm. An intention to kill requires the accused to have had the specific intention to perform an action or omit to do something that would result in the consequence of the victim's death. This is usually the single hardest element to prove as it is inferred by a person's actions. Fortunately for the prosecution, the crimes are all on camera. I think any rational jury would infer Fanana had the intent to kill from actions like, oh geez, I don't know, pulling out a diamond sword, letting the bear approach her when she could have easily run away, say the words, I'm gonna take your baby, and strike the bear four fucking times with a fire aspect diamond sword. Additionally, an intention to inflict grievous bodily harm is similar and self-explanatory. For our purposes, definition B from section 4 of the Crimes Act 1900 applies to this case because striking a bear with a diamond sword that burns them would be akin to a permanent or serious disfiguring of the person. With more than one fault element satisfied and the physical element satisfied, it looks like Fanana is guilty of murder. Mr. Wright is correct. If self-defense is satisfied, Fernanda would be acquitted of her charges due to Section 418.1 of the Crimes Act. Furthermore, if the defense raised self-defense, it is up to the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Fernanda did not act in self-defense. The elements of self-defense are in Section 418.2 and contains two main limbs that must be satisfied, which, according to the case of Katarinsky, involves a subjective assessment of the accused's state of mind and an objective assessment of the proportionality of the accused's response. For the first limb, Fernanda would try to claim that she believed her conduct was necessary to protect herself or Pomu by reason of section 418-2A. Due to the way criminal standards work, self-defense is actually quite generous toward the accused. If the prosecution fails to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that both limbs are inapplicable, then Fernanda would be found not guilty of murder. But if the prosecution cannot disprove limb 1, but is able to prove limb 2, then Fernanda would be found not guilty of murder, but guilty of voluntary manslaughter by reason of excessive self-defense. As a side note, this is a partial defense under section 421, which downgrades the seriousness of murder and occurs when a person believed that their conduct was necessary, but their response was not reasonable. Back on topic, the prosecution must disprove limb one beyond a reasonable doubt for self-defense to not apply at all. So did Fernanda have a belief that striking a polar bear four times with a diamond sword with fire aspect is necessary to defend herself or Pomu? Looking at the facts, I think the answer is no, because if you check Fanana's POV, she isn't at a high risk of death, the bear is slow, and she is much faster, and her statement I'm gonna take your baby puts a nail in the coffin in the idea that Fanana is just an innocent little fish defending herself. So with question one found inapplicable, Fanana would likely be guilty of murder. But that's not the only offense she'd be charged with. Section 86 1 
of the Crimes Act 1900 lays out kidnapping as a crime where a person detains another without their consent and with the intention to hold the person to ransom or to commit a serious offence or to obtain an advantage. For our purposes, paragraph B is the most important. According to the case of R and Rose, paragraph B includes psychological gratification or satisfaction, such as the detaining of a person because the accused wants to talk with them. Fanana's wish well, to mother baby, the huh? polar bear as a pet I'm gonna raise it. is probably beyond a reasonable doubt considered psychological gratification. Fighting an underwater thing, aren't we? in front of its eyes. Edgy Lord is right, but there may be some certain circumstances where the kidnapping warrants a harsher punishment. Section 86.2 lays out the offence of aggravated kidnapping, which occurs if a person commits kidnapping either in the company of another or actual bodily harm is occasioned on the victim. For that, sentencing jumps from 14 years to 20. But what if you have both elements? In that case, you'd have another offence called specially aggravated kidnapping, which carries a 25-year imprisonment sentence. So the question becomes, is Fanana guilty of specially aggravated kidnapping? Almost entirely, without a doubt. Fanana kidnapped the bear in Pogba's company, and the bear was injured and later killed. Fanana is guilty of specially aggravated kidnapping. Basically, no matter how much gaslighting Fanana tries to pull off about how she had no intent or how she acted in self-defense, the facts and the law is exceedingly clear. Fanana Ryugu is a murderer and a child polar bear kidnapper. Shit on Finana. Before we explore the killing of the second polar bear, I want to explore if Pomu is guilty of kidnapping the bear. Now it is important to note that Pomu is not the principal offender in this case, because she wasn't the one who actually kidnapped the second polar bear. That said, she may still be guilty of specially aggravated kidnapping if she is what we call a principal in the second degree. This means Pomu would also be subject to the 25 year sentence, like Fanana. So, is Pomu a principal in the second degree? A principal in the second degree is essentially an aider and a better, and the test to determine a principal in the second degree is developed in case law as shown on screen. I've taken these questions and reworded them for our purposes. Essentially, the prosecution needs to answer the following. Question 1 is satisfied, because we know that Fanana committed the crime of specially aggravated kidnapping. Question 2 is also satisfied, because Pomu was there. For question 3 to be satisfied, it needs to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Pomu needed to know that the bear was taken without its consent, it was taken in the company of more than one person, was injured during that taking, and was taken for Fanana's enjoyment. Let's review the evidence. You killed it in front of its- you killed its mom in front of its eyes! Okay. Push him in. What are you gonna do with this baby, huh? I'm gonna raise it. 
you can't ride the boat anymore. Yes, you can, right? Let's eat this. Um, Tinada! Question three is satisfied. For question four, it is important that Pomu didn't merely acquiesce or assent to Fanana's crime, because in such cases, they would not be liable as a principal in the second degree. But if we look at the evidence, it actually shows the opposite. Pomu actively aided and abetted Finano. Let's review the tapes again. Okay. Push him in. in there. <laughs> Just give me a second. I'm gonna make it work. We're taking him home. <laughs> because each question is satisfied, Pomu is guilty of specially aggravated kidnapping as a principal in the second degree. As such, she's also subject to the same 25-year sentence as Finano. But now, the big question. I think the milkshake overrides the cold one because the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. It's just simple math. At first glance, this case looks like a manslaughter case, but because of the rather outrageous circumstances of this case, in which a child was kidnapped and two bears were killed, a prosecutor would probably try to go for the hardest charges possible. As such, we'll examine if Pomu is guilty of murder. As a refresher, here are the elements. Now, Pomu feels the physical elements of murder quite clearly, but the mental element is questionable. It is clear that Pomu did not act with an intent to kill or an intent to inflict grievous bodily harm, but there is a possibility she acted with reckless indifference to human life. Reckless indifference requires the accused to have had the knowledge that their action or omission would probably result in death, and that despite the knowledge, they acted anyway. It is not enough for someone to entertain a mere possibility of death, for example, if you had the knowledge that driving a truck into a bar would probably kill anyone inside and you do it anyway, you would be recklessly indifferent and thus convicted of murder. However, due to the standard of reasonable doubt, it is unclear on these facts whether reckless indifference would be satisfied, so let me present the relevant facts. <laughs> If you were a juror, do you think Von Karma proved that Pomu acted with reckless indifference beyond a reasonable doubt, or do you think that Wright effectively cast a doubt that Pomu acted with reckless indifference? If you've gotten this far in the video, 
please let me know in the comments below because I'm actually interested in hearing it and smash that like button and subscribe. However, if reckless indifference isn't made out, it doesn't matter because there is a strong case that Pomu would satisfy the elements of constructive murder. Constructive murder is an unlawful killing that is absent of any specific intent, but is done in an attempt to commit or during or immediately after the commission by the accused or by an accomplice of a crime punishable to 25 years of imprisonment or more. Now, consider the case of Ryan and the Queen. In Ryan, the accused robbed the store and held the attendant at gunpoint with the weapon locked and cocked against his head. When the attendant moved, the gun was discharged due to a reflex movement that killed the attendant. The accused argued they had no intent to kill, but their conviction was upheld by the High Court of Australia. According to Justice Windyer, even if the pulling of the trigger was involuntary and without intent, it was the series of conscious acts before the final act, the robbing of the store, the loading of the rifle, the cocking it and presenting it, that resulted in the murder. In Ryan, the court essentially recognises that while deaths can happen unintentionally, they shouldn't be excused if they were done in the course of a serious crime that was done voluntarily, as such murder would be found. Simply put, if a person's conduct kills someone in the course of, immediately after, or in an attempt to commit a really serious crime done by them or their accomplice, they'd be found guilty of murder, regardless of whether they had the intent. So let's apply that to Pomu. First, Fanano, an accomplice with Pomu, committed specially aggravated kidnapping, a crime punishable to 25 years of imprisonment. Additionally, Pomu is also considered to have committed this crime as she is a principal in the second degree. The foundational offence is established. You're Second, Pomu killing, killing the bear with an iron axe in an attempt to break the bear out of the boat occurred during the crime. Pomu was right, she had no intent, but like in Ryan, Pomu was consciously aiding and abetting Fanana in a really serious crime, and the law will not excuse her simply because she accidentally happened to kill a polar bear. Putting the evidence presentable in front of a jury, it's likely they would find both Fanana and Pomu guilty for the kidnapping of the baby polar bear and the murders of two polar bears. Unfortunately, your Oshis will be subject to two convictions that will probably keep them in prison for 25 years to life, with the available defences having been exhausted for the crimes of specially aggravated kidnapping and murder, Fanana Ryugu and Pomu Rainpuff are found guilty. That's right, Your Honor. Raymond.